This is the Fever is Real docu-series, telling stories. You're going to hear from some amazing, talented artists, dancers, DJs, singers. Hi, my name is Beatrice Monica, and I'm Miss B on the book, <laughs> The Real Dance Fever. And um, I was an all-star dancer, all-star shine. And, um, Presently, I am. Uh, I have a PhD in counseling psychology, and I'm a therapist at a, com a community health center. And um, I can tell you that the era has enlightened me, and it's part of me. And I'm never gonna leave it behind. How do I think this story is relevant to other places in the world with kids the same ages? I believe the story is very relevant because the dance era was a form of expression. It was an art and um, when a when, in, when the kids don't have a voice, dance is their voice. And um, that's what it was for us. It was an expression, it was a way of, when we were angry, just letting out our anger. It, when we were sad, to portray that sadness through dance. And it's being utilized now. It's a form of therapy. It's a form of it's almost like a light, it's a path to something better. And um, right now, I'm involved in the Chicago International Salsa Congress, and, and that's what they do. They tell a story. They let you know that they're there to stay, that they're gonna make it to places unknown. What inspired me the most about the Real Dance Fever story, what inspired me the most was the art of dance and how it's a form of expression. I am a therapist now and I myself use dance in therapy and music in therapy. And my daughter is a professional dancer and is traveling the world. So I would say that the expression of art, the expression of being free, of how liberating you can get, how liberated you can get when you're dancing and how we relay messages in dance. And that it has transformed generations so that they can be who they want to be. What came out the most to me about the story, The Real Dance Fever? Hmm, let me think about that. Wow. It's so long ago. Don't let that reveal my age. Um, I think that what, what, re what was revealed was um, how in depth Gringo captured the friendships, the challenges that we went through, the, the being able to, to be away and come back to something that was so special to so many teenagers. Um, it makes me a little emotional, I guess, because it was something that was a, uh, like a home, like a family out of my family when there was things going on and I couldn't talk about things to my my parents, of course. Uh, I just think that there was this solidarity between the dancers and a lot of support, which is something that is needed now in the world. What upset me the most in this story 
Um, I guess it could be, and it's a little personal, um, that there was some misinterpretation a few times about me and how I drifted away from, from Gringo. Um, regardless of what transpired, um, I still loved him and when people asked me about him, I said, you know what, I still love him, he's my best friend no matter what. Um, is, I guess, the sadness of so many people just drifting apart. Um, a family that was so tight and so united, not, um, not being there for each other after so many years. And I don't see it as a negative because I think that we depended on each other so much during that time that we needed to grow in a different way as adults. And we all had our families, our, our children, our husbands, and um, we needed to accomplish certain goals. Like I needed to obtain a PhD. I needed to prove to myself that I could make it in the outside world. And when I say the outside world, because I think that the dance world was some, a world of its own. So I think that it upset me a little, just knowing that people drifted apart. But the good thing is that we're coming back. And we're the same friends as we used to be. What surprised me about Gringo that I didn't know, um, I sort of knew everything about Gringo, but I didn't know that he was so relentless, that he was going to keep the era alive like he's doing right now. Um, he went through heart surgery, he, he went through a lot of loss and he proved that regardless of what's going on, you have to not give up. And um, I guess we're similar in that way because regardless of the obstacles, regardless of the, the chaos and the Format, different things that are happening around you, you're invincible. You're able to reach the top of that mountain and take it to the extreme. Um, so that's something that I didn't know about Google. And yet, we're very similar in that way. Um, The other thing is that he didn't let go and he was a father figure and a lot of fathers in reality don't let go they really have you know, their children. He was the father figure and um, I know that I could come home whenever I want. And I am so honored to have Miss B right here live for you guys and giving her testimony. I love her. I'm glad she's home. She's always been home. I'm so proud of her. And I know that she is going to be helping a lot of people because she always helped us in the All-Stars and she defended us and she was our security. So um, I am honored and that you guys got to hear Beatrice and I just wanted her uh, sitting next to me. Uh, because uh, it's history and uh, she was by my side from the beginning and now I have no hair and she's by my side. Thank you. <laughs>